My name is Tracy Simmons, and I'm the executive director of Spokane Faith and Values, which is known as Spokane Faves. I started Spokane Faves uh, almost eight years ago now because um, I noticed that in the Spokane area there was a void in the local media uh, in religion news coverage. And so I wanted to, to fill that gap um, for the local community. And so I started this uh, online publication as a way to do that. And I think it's really important to have a publication that is dedicated to covering religion news because um, it's important to know the belief systems of those around you. Um, and I think it's a topic that can really um, educate you about your neighbors and about the community that you live in. And it's a way to create relationships and break down barriers, and no other beat can do that. So today's event is um, our last coffee talk of the year. We do coffee talks uh, right now every other month, and they are a way for us to kind of, um, I take a pulse of what people are talking about on the line, or, what, or online, sorry, um, and I try to bring that together for an offline conversation. And so right now, it seems like there's a trend in a lot of the columns and the news articles that we've published um, that is trust, trust is broken. And so we're having a conversation about it. How do we, how do we repair trust? How do we restore trust? Welcome to the Faith Center. Um, this is Spokane's only interfaith community center. Um, after coffee talk today, we're gonna clean up and get the building ready for the Hindus to worship here tomorrow. Having this building as a nonprofit potentially means we get it. For, we don't have to pay property taxes on it. Um, and it's a really cool revenue stream because now groups can use this building for worship. So we have the Hindus worshiping here and the Baha'is worshiping here. Uh, and it's a really cool business model because they pay to rent this building and that in turn funds local journalism. We have a feature on the site called Ask a Jew. And we have other features like Ask a Muslim, Ask an Evangelical. Um, we have 40 columnists. And so one of our Jewish writers um, invited me to his 40th birthday party at the Viking. Uh, and so I went to his birthday party and I looked around the table and I noticed that Almost everyone there was someone he had met through the website. And so because we have these events, these coffee talk events, and we've been having these for years now, um, everyone knows each other. I mean, they stand next to each other to get a cup of coffee, and they've read each other's columns, and now they're having conversations face to face. And when you do that all the time, um, you're not just reading words on a screen. You're actually engaging with each other offline. Um, and so you create friendships. How is it that you daily look at yourself and say, you know, how, how is it that I can improve my trustworthiness in either my job or the institution I serve or just whatever it is? People think of Spokane, I, I certainly did when I first moved here, um, and I thought this was just a, a evangelical Christian community, um, but if you dig underneath the surface a little bit, there's actually a really robust religious community here. There's Hindus and Muslims and a variety of Hindus and Muslims, and there's two Sikh temples, and um, there's lots of different Buddhist communities in Spokane, and there's a huge population of people who I would consider seekers, so they are maybe not part of a specific religious community, but they want to engage in these conversations. Um, so we've been able to highlight these groups and also bring them together for conversation. We have a, we have a feature on the site called Ask an Atheist, um, and for a while it was our number one column. <laughs> We begin by setting our posture by sitting up straight, just keeping our back straight. That helps to support our, the flow of energy in our body and keeps our mind more alert. I mean, the people who come to these coffee talks, um, a lot of them are, are people who don't practice any religion at all, but they really want to engage in these difficult conversations, in these passionate conversations, which is super cool. And I think what we've tapped into here is that people really want to get to know each other. Um, and and try to get past their differences. And we've worked really, really hard, for example, to get everyone at the table, which is really hard work to do. And so we have um, two or three evangelical writers, for example, and it was really hard to get them to write for us. It took years. It took years to get Jewish writers um, to write for us. In 2020, we're hoping to have a lot more, a lot more events. So, because I think that um, giving, chance, giving people a chance to participate in what they're reading is the future of journalism.